What's up guys and welcome back for episode 2 in my series of uh, Life as a Small Corporation Director. Um, I'm going to jump straight in and just say um, that the first video which in this series which I uploaded last week on the Sunday um, I've been really really surprised and taken aback by by the response it's received. Uh, it's just it's just excellent. I really didn't expect it to garner such a good response. Um, so, so a lot of you have commented um, talking about how uh, you're excited by the series and stuff and I hope it doesn't disappoint. I've had a lot of people reach out to me in game which is excellent. Um, really enjoy communicating with guys in game if if you enjoy what you see please do feel free to reach out to me the character's name is also Wadenderas so it's pretty easy um, it's just been excellent there's been so much such response I just thank you guys for um, for for engaging and I hope the rest of the series doesn't disappoint um, I will admit after last week's um, I uploaded the video it was like lovely that was excellent and then hmm I'm concerned nothing's gonna happen this week and the next one is going to be boring well, I hope that's not the case. We have had some stuff going on, so um, I guess we'll get on with it. Uh, just um, I think last video I was sat in a in a skin, um, so this week I thought I'd uh, bring you another one. This was this is the Raven Death Glow. What's it called? Death Glow Remnant. Um, this is one of the skins that were was given out during the Crimson Harvest event for Omega clones, uh, Omega accounts, sorry. Um, so anyone that's Omega that logged in for the seven days, we've got this for free. Um, I quite like it, looks like a pretty good one. Uh, it's fairly in your face and you've got the skull thing here, so I like it. It's better than my other Raven one, so I'll be flying this for the time being. So anyway, skins and ships to one side. What have we been up to this week? Um, so obviously this video, the f episode one went out on the Sunday. Um, that's when I recorded it as well. I'm recording this on the Sunday as well, so we got the full week. Um, and we started on the Monday. We had our weekly mining operation as a corporation. Um, was really pleased with it. To be honest, we had ten uh, ships out mining for the for the duration, which was really good. Really pleased with that. Um, and it was it included some uh, a couple of characters that had watched the first video um, on Sunday and joined us on the Monday and were out mining with us on the Monday evening so that that was really cool um, and you know it was nice we cleared a whole belt in in about an hour 45 um, it was good fun we'll be running it again tomorrow um, every Monday nine o'clock um, and I have organized with um, a US counterpart to um, boost a US mining operation f starting this Monday I believe um, so that our US contingent um, are also able to get in on the mining operations action and it's not just the EU lot um, we want to try and keep it balanced across our two major playing regions that's quite important don't want people to feel left out um, and so that's what we're working on at the moment as well. Um, recruitment for the whole week has been really quite good. I think I showed you the numbers last week. So let's have a quick look again this week. Go here. Attributes. We're up to 91. I think we're on like 75 or 77, something like that, last week. Um, so recruitment's been going really well. We've added, you know, 15, 16 active pilots in the last week which is excellent you can see this I've probably got it blurred but the seven of us online now which is middle of the Sunday afternoon um, the, in the US lot aren't on oh, that's pretty good um, so that's been really exciting um, and some of that's come from YouTube some of that's come from what we're peddling in game we've got a few adverts out um, so they brought in a couple of people uh, we are, our HR director um, has been pushing that. We've also got uh, anyone that jumps into our wormhole that we then uh, fight or kill. We then try and recruit afterwards. Bit of an aggressive uh, recruitment tactic, but um, it's it's brought in a few 
uh, people that are sort of fairly newish to the game but are interested in wormhole life so that's quite a good way of um, of finding those people you know someone pops in the heron who feel bad about going killing them because they're relatively new but um, they're given the opportunity to join up afterwards and so that they can learn and things so that's there's been a couple of people this week from that mechanism as well um, so that's that's been good really pleased with the way recruitment's gone activity has been excellent this week um, and that actually I'm just gonna lead me straight into um, the continued corporation yeah corporation ops um, on Wednesday I think it was Wednesday our two of our structures in our C1 wormhole were attacked and put into armor timer um, we weren't online to defend the shield at being attacked um, so it got yeah it got reinforced put into armor timer um, ready to come out so they could be attacked again on the Thursday um, but we put out a bit of a call our um, CEO and our security director um, who Maestadon is our security guy he um, scrambled together a bit of a defense doctrine because we haven't done that hugely yet but we had you know we got stuff set up but he put together a bit of a fleet doctrine so that we could defend and the response from the corporation was excellent um, including a good number of the new guys that joined this week I think we had yeah we had a really strong fleet formed up in the wormhole in the C1 on the Thursday everyone had moved everyone had got the doctrine ship or been provided with it they'd moved over back to the C1 and were ready to defend on the Thursday um, the timers were a bit spread out there was one at like half four in the afternoon and one at half ten that sort of thing um, but the aggressors never showed which was excellent we'd done our um, sort of intel research and were pretty confident that either A they wouldn't show or B they were quite a small group and would be able to beat them so we're feeling fairly confident and we're actually looking forward to the fight so when they didn't show it was a bit disappointing but it was nice to know that our structures were safe obviously um, would have been a shame to lose an Athenor and a uh, I think it was the Raitaru and the Astrahas um, it would have been obviously disappointing to uh, lose those but we were confident and we were looking forward to the fight so and again so thanks to the, everyone that turned up for that we had a really good showing and so many of it was the new guys that joined this week so that's excellent to see um, and then as a result uh, because we were all formed up and fleeted up ready to go and no one was there afterwards we ran um, some big fleet uh, wormhole sites in the C1 and in the in a neighboring C2 um, we just not for too long maybe an hour hour and a half we uh, flew around knocking down some sleepers, picking up the blue loot and the salvage. Um, so that was really good fun. A few people on comms, um, yeah, running running around sleeper sites, just blitzing through them because we obviously had the numbers and could just fly through them. They're not that difficult in a C1 or a C2. Um, but then once we got uh, through the C2, some people start, uh, it's, you know, the numbers started dwindling and we ended up with just three of us uh, by then running the C2 sites together. But we were in really quite inappropriate ships. Um, you would normally be trying to take on a C2 in a either a very well fit cruiser like the Gila um, or a T3 cruiser or a battleship or something. Um, I was in a poorly fit Gila and we did have a couple of guys in, a, I think, a T3 destroyer and something else, maybe a caracal. And so we had a lot of fun uh, trying to work out how to do the sites without losing one of our ships. You know, warping it, like dropping aggro, um, trying to keep the gila tanking. But even then, some of the one of the bat some of the battleship sleepers in a C2 can do a lot of damage. So that was that was good fun. We had to we had a, had a laugh on comms trying to work out how to how best to do that. So that's. Uh, that was really good, um, excellent fun on Thursday night to um, A, see the scramble defence for the structures was brilliant to see and then B, having a bunch of people in a fleet doing combat sites um, 
we had a lot of fun and a good laugh. So that was uh, that was excellent, good content. Excuse me. Um, so that was uh, that's what sort of core um, fleet activities for the week. Um, we'll be trying to do a lot more of that. Like as I say, Mondays every week is a formal mining operation, but there's also um, other mining stuff going on that um, I need to be as a director. I need to be aware of a lot of the time. So uh, one of our guys, the HR director, Drell, um, during the week he tends to spend the day just sat in his orca. He'll have a standing fleet up so that um, if anyone wants to, they can go and join him and be boosted um, and we had the same thing happened I think yesterday um, one of the newer members uh, wanted to mine and asked if there was an organized fleet and again another of our newer members but he's a much more experienced player um, said he'd happily undock his orca and boost for them or for anyone else that wanted to so that'd be really good if we just we're gonna hopefully start having a lot of impromptu mining stuff um, and whilst they might not be formalized yet I'll be looking at trying to formalize more often um, and as a result though obviously everyone's starting to pick up a load of minerals um, gonna have to revitalize the buyback scheme um, which this leads into nicely actually is yeah, I as as director of raw materials, um, I am responsible for the as it, as you might imagine the corporation sourcing raw materials and what happens with them and stuff. So um, this the dramatic increase in the amount of raw materials that our corp members are farming. Um, I need to I want to and need to try and offer some in. Uh, some mechanism or some incentive um, for people to do this and to keep it within the court. So um, we've, we already operate an ore, an ore buyback scheme, um, but I need to freshen it up. It was suitable for the the small numbers that did it, but I need to um, spend this week, yeah, having a look at how the mechanism might work and making it more accessible and more visible to everyone. Um, talk to Hot Black about setting up a corporation bulletin probably and I'll send a mail out and stuff but um, yeah basically what, I'm, what I would like to be able to do and I really need to look at a mechanism for this and I'm struggling so if anyone watching has suggestions or, um, or a mechanism they operate in their own corporation I'd be really excited to, uh, to hear but basically I want to obviously be able to buy um, our members or if they want to sell it to the corporation they can sell it to the corporation so they don't have to haul to market and stuff um, and then what, obviously the corp, uh, the corp has its own manufacturing projects we need or to be able to do like our ship replacement program um, and build doctrine ships and things like that but what I also want to be able to do is sell so as, as part of stockpiling the ore is then make the ore available to sell to our budding industrialists in the corporation um, again at a favorable rate um, ideally cheaper than market price but also it's obviously a benefit that we'll be able to sell it at our manufacturing hubs and they wouldn't have to haul it from market so I'd like to be able to make it available for them to buy so that then they can do their industry and then either obviously they ship their resultant products to market or um, if there are certain items that the corporation or members within the corporation want to buy we can set up a mechanism so that um, the, our industrialists are building those and then able to sell them back to the corporation like doctrine ships and fits and stuff like that um, if they you know as a, so a potential mutually beneficial revenue stream for the corporation and for the industrialists in our inside the corp um, to be able to source raw materials, s pass, move them on to the members, have the members build stuff, get them back, send them back to the corp, but all you know for money and things. I need a decent mechanism for that. 
Um, one solution is that we are in our C2. The next step we're going to be focusing on is um, anchoring a Fortizar. So that's, um, I think, that's a medium size structure, uh, which will mean we can install a market rig, uh, not rig, uh, market service. So then within the C2 wormhole, we can sell stuff on the market to each other as normal. So, you know, then the corporation can put the minerals up for sale on the market, industrialists buy them from there, and then build whatever they want and put that on the market so other people can buy it. That is one option, and that's probably where we'll go. Um, and co there's contracts and stuff as well, of course. But basically, yeah, I need to find a way to document this stuff and have it all set up. Um, so that's that's been engaging a lot of my time this week while I try and think of a good mechanism there um, and to assist that I've also been trying to learn Excel a lot better and build uh, build powerful spreadsheets for this stuff um, part, per, partly for my own personal industry um, I've been I've recently discovered the streamer and youtuber Mupa Sega um, I would th thoroughly recommend any industrialist to go and check him out or anyone that likes spreadsheets go and check him out on Twitch um, or his YouTube um, that's Mupa Sega um, he is a wizard when it comes to spreadsheets um, and I want to go somewhere one a one hundredth of his ability um, but at the moment I'm a very much a noob at spreadsheeting and um, I'm, you know, I'm struggling with the API stuff and all sorts at the moment. Um, so I've been working on that a lot this week, and I'll probably continue that, but maybe with less less effort because um, if this market comes online, then it's not so important, and I can just record the court stockpiles instead. So that's all. That's all. You know ticking along nicely um, oh and then in, with the um, C2 in mind when talking about the Fortisar um, something else we're having to consider the board and then the corporation in general is um, continuing to establish ourselves in the C2 we want to make this our main area of um, of industry um, actually and probably our, our main activity within the corporation obviously we'll keep we keep the C1 because we've got well-established PI stuff there that's a pain to move um, and it just it's good for tra uh, wormhole training and stuff anyway uh, obviously we'll keep the high sec operations for now but I think we're talking about making our the C2 our main area um, so we want to make it uh, make it ours make it safe right so there's there's quite a lot of towers um, from a, a what we think is a dead alliance, dead corporation. Um, they've got the old, they're the old POS control towers, or the old POS system. We want to go and take them down so that they can't just be reactivated on a whim. Um, there's a lot of them. And then we want to take down the customs offices as well and replace them with our own on the planets. Um, so that's our next major push. And to achieve that, we, we want to get um, at least 10 battleships in the wormhole to ramp up the DPS a little bit. Um, that's on the cards for this week hopefully um, and that's mostly the remit of again our CEO Hot Black and our security director Maestodon but as you can see I'm sat here in the Raven I've got a battleship in here um, and that's all things to consider um, as the corporation and things and we're helping our other guys move in um, and also obviously last week I mentioned Tripwire and I've done the uh, for and I've done the tutorial video for Tripwire when it comes to um, wormhole living essentially um, Hot Black and I have also been investigating um, a different service called Pathfinder um, it's really good actually uh, we've decided we've decided I think that we prefer it to tripwire um, and so 
we've been testing that, that's taken up a, a good bit of time. Um, so we're probably going to move to repl move our tripwire system over to Pathfinder properly and shift the corporation over there. Um, especially before we get too big, because we don't want to. Like it's annoying for everyone to get set up on tripwire and then move across to a different system. So before recruitment goes really well, we want to get established on all the systems we really want to use. So this might be Pathfinder this week. So watch this space for a Pathfinder tutorial. Um, again, it probably won't be any good. Uh, I'm not an expert. It's just what I've picked up in the last week or so. But we'll see. That will be probably coming this week. Um, oh, and as also part of the wormhole. If I know in my last video, I mentioned I've been testing a uh, well, not testing, but investigating a, a porpoise fit for the C2. Um, that I've, I've made no progress on that in this week because of the stuff that happened in the C1 with the wormhole back, um, with the structure attack and stuff. Um, so I would like to get back onto that this week. Um, I need to liquidize, liquidate uh, some assets before I'm willing to buy that because it, but you know, it cost me sort of 100, 120 mil ish, um, and then I'll bring it into the hole. Um, we'll start getting that set up as well, so we can run some cheaper boosts if needed. But again, one of our newer members did mention they'd be willing to bring an orca in, which would be which would be awesome as well. Um, so where does that leave us so far? Oh, being attacked. Oh, and that's a pretty useful reminder. Again, this is my ult on a on a high sec moon. Um, they'll go and attack that in a second. I'm not too worried. Um, basically, I also mentioned in the last video that I'm trying to stockpile now um, moon materials. Uh, this is all part of the raw material gathering and wanting to be able to sell it to our members and things. Um, obviously if they just want to do T1 production that's cool, but if anyone wants to do T2 production, which I do as well, we need moon goo. Um, so I'm stockpiling high sec moon goo with my alt at the moment. And we've built, uh, built an, or, and are building a relationship with a um, uh, big player in Nullsec, a big industrialist down there who has access to several very nice moons and good um, good materials, our 64 materials down there. Um, he's actually jumped a, an alt into our corporation to join us in high second stuff which is awesome. It's really nice that he wants to do that. Um, but he is hope he wants to be able to give us preferential access to any materials that he's bringing up to sell in high sec. Um, so that would be excellent to have access to null materials and R64 moons and things. Um, so if I can stockpile some of that stuff, um, I then will uh, perform reactions um, to produce the comp um, component materials required for people to do T2 production and then we'll be able to sell that to, to people and things. Uh, that's all part of the plan. Um, so that's what Zake is doing. Um, this is just with high sex stuff. But I've also uh, just wanted to mention, actually, with the high sex stuff, um, the moon materials and reactions. I've come across, and a lot of people know about this already, and I'd be curious to if anyone is aware, if they could drop me a comment or message me in game about how worthwhile it is. But I'm going to look into um, the unrefined processes in the reactions. So if I go raw moon materials, probably. Well, no, is that, let me, uh, yeah, I'll go raw moon materials. If we go this way, you can go atmospheric gases. You can see that atmospheric gases can be used in sulfuric acid, fine, but then two unrefined processes. So if we have a look at unrefined hexite, it requires two high sec materials, atmospheric gas and evaporate deposits. They're both available from high sec moons, easily accessible, you can get them on the market real cheap as well. That's fine. 
and you produce unrefined hexite. If you then uh, reprocess the hexite, unrefined hexite, you'll get 36 hexite as a result. Um, that's obviously you probably won't get 36, it'll depend on the um, refining uh, skill percentage. But you get hexite, which is um, much harder to get hold of, right? The only way you can produce actual hexite from the moon materials is with chromium and platinum, which are only available in low second null sec. So th that's that's what I'm investigating. That's my question because I can produce hexite, which is only available in essentially from null sec materials or low sec materials from high sec materials, atmospheric gases and evaporate deposits would produce an amount of hexite. And that's the case for a lot of um, these things. If we go to rod unrefined rolled tungsten alloy, atmospheric gases, and this time with tungsten, but if you were to refine tungsten alloy, so that again this confuses me a little bit, basically assuming you got perfect refine, right, the input is 100 tungsten and 100 atmospheric gas gases. Assuming you have perfect refining, which no one does, it's not possible, you would get out of it 164 tungsten and 36 tungsten alloy. So providing your skills are high enough, this is telling me, right, I could go to the market and buy 100 tungsten and, just, and then just go and mine atmospheric gases in high sec indefinitely right and then with that original 100 tungsten I uh, bought from the market I can produce 164 tungsten and then you know and then again I've then got 164 tungsten that I can do the process with again and again and again and again I end up with a load of tungsten as well as a load of raw tungsten alloy without ever going and mining any tungsten Which is cool. Like so, that's what I want to check out: is how how worthwhile that is. Um, because, like, we've got a good access to high sec moons. Um, so potentially, there's some a really good opportunity there. It might be slow. Like reactions take a long time to perform, um, and you know without the right skills, say we get 70%, we're just getting just over 100 and you know like 25 maybe so it might be slow but there's something there I'm gonna investigate um, and if it if it looks like it's working out I might uh, do a video on that as well because that's interesting for me um, and, you know, and that's something if it means the corporation can have access to other materials then awesome, if I can make that available to our corporation members that's wicked um, right, so we're approaching the end of the video I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to talk about this week oh, we have been, again um, Hot Black and myself and uh, I think eventually Mastodon have been checking out a, a, another app called, um, I just don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm going to call it SEAT, uh, S-E-A-T, um, but not just SEAT, because it's capitalised oddly. Um, but SEAT basically as a um, sort of an HR tool, um, but also it enables us to produce and publish doctrine fits, and um, uh, you can store your other apps there, so links into Discord, links into tripwire and stuff can all be in SEAT. Um the reason we've been investigating it and it's been taking a little while is because of just the sheer volume of personal information the default settings want um, they're not personal not personal information but basically they want all of your character's information um, as default and um, you know so I can go on the app now and 
all of my mess in-game mails are there, all of my wallet transactions, all of my contracts, um, everything, all my planets, everything is in that app. And that's a bit overwhelming and daunting. And especially, you know, if we were to ask our members to sign up, um, they might go, hang on, why are you asking for all this information? Like, we don't want that information from them. Like, we don't, we don't want to evade that level of privacy. Um, but the, some of the stuff the app can do is really cool. So we, Hot Black has been working really hard this week on um, trying to get it set up so that we don't need to ask for all that information. I think he's made really good progress um, and we're getting close to being able to roll that out for our members. Um, so again, there's potentially going to be another video coming out uh, on that for our members to be able to look at so they know what's going on and what they're doing. Um, but yeah, we we want to we want to before that goes live, we want to get to a point where our um, that I th we think our members would be comfortable um, and not you know not at all put out by the amount of information they're being asked to share. Because as I say, we're not interested in it. Like we're not we're not trying to you know we we don't assume everyone in our corporation is a spy and all that sort of kind of stuff you know we're not like that we just want everyone to have a nice time and be able to use apps that are available to them oh and that's actually something else um that did remind me um as part of our as part of the the awesome response to the video um this will be the last thing i promise the video is going quite long again this will be the last thing um as part of the awesome response to uh the video last week there's been quite a lot of people reaching out to collaborate in game um, so not ju you know not just join the corp or just say nice things um, other corporations and alliances and groups of people have reached out um, to collaborate with us in different areas um, and that that's awesome we're really excited to do that sort of thing as well so um, you know someone's reached out as a build a bit of a high set coalition they've already got a group of stuff uh, uh, a group that start to work together sort of informally um, and people that can make they can make blue um, they we're talking to them about moving in sort of into that area with them and being able to have a huge chunk of that part of high set completely blued and stuff would be would be excellent um, there's been a, there's a small corporation that um, live, owns and lives in a C4 wormhole uh, they have reached out to talk to us about uh, again a potential collaboration or alliance or something um, that would be mutually beneficial uh, where you know they want numbers to make their home more secure um, they have t sort of too much that too many raw materials for their small size and stuff so uh, having more numbers in there to mine, to run sites, to do all that is is beneficial for them, especially from a security standpoint. Um, but for us, like they've got awesome access, they've got big facilities, they've got cap building capabilities, they build dreads in there, like that's that would be exciting. So that we're in conversation with them, and there's been all sorts of that this week, um, which is which is really cool. And actually, it's probably been the biggest part of my week, um, which is excellent as what I really enjoy is uh, is that, is the, talking to all the different people that are willing to work with us, all the opportunities that are available to us and, you know, working out where we want to go in the game, that's all superb. So uh, if anyone wants to work with us, please do reach out. That is excellent. Um, really appreciate the, uh, the, the people doing so. Like it is just, it's just phenomenal, the opportunities people are offering. Um, so I guess that's it for this week. That's that's uh, yeah, I think that's probably it. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope you're enjoying the series generally now. We're two episodes in, and we'll just keep going, keep ticking away. If there's anything you'd like more detail on, um, anything you want to see a video on or more detail each week, if there's something you want me to say or to touch on. Um, next week's episode please let me know comments reach out in game uh, whichever um, I'll be happy to talk about most things there are some stuff that we want to keep a little bit private um, 
and you know I, I if there's things if there are some sensitive things I check with Hot Black the CEO before talking about the one here but um, yeah if, if you've got any questions about anything please don't hesitate to ask if you want me to elaborate on anything or um, touch on a different point then yeah let's do it um, anyway thanks very much for watching guys I uh, hope you'll enjoy your evening cheers